हेलो एवरीवन टुडे इज द डे थ्री ऑफ कोड ड्राइफ्ट एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू बिगिन विद सॉल्विंग द प्रॉब्लम वाटर लीकेज सो इन दिस प्रॉब्लम लेट्स बिगिन विद रीडिंग द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट इन योर हाउस देर इज अ कंटिन्यू सप्लाई ऑफ वाटर थ्रू अ पाइप द वाटर कैन बी व्हाइट व्हिच इज प्योर और ब्लैक व्हिच इज इम्प्योर देर इज अ लीकेज इन द पाइप थ्रू विच वाटर इज कमिंग आउट अगेन द ड्रॉपलेट्स विच आर कमिंग आउट कैन बी व्हाइट और ब्लैक इन कलर द इंटरवल ऑफ व्हाइट ड्रॉपलेट्स इज ए यूनिट एंड द इंटरवल ऑफ ब्लैक ड्रॉपलेट्स इज बी यूनिट That means if a droplet fall at a moment x, then it will again fall after its interval. Now you have to tell which droplet fall more often in LCM of a comma b. Considering first white droplet fall at a and the first black droplets fall at b. If it is pure, then return the string white. If it is impure, then return the string black. And if both the water droplets are falling equally, then return equal. Note in the case both droplets are coming out together, its color will be the one whose interval is more. and consider on this problem is a and b which are the intervals of the droplet is from 1 to 10 to the power 9 and a is never equal to b so now in order to understand this problem now let's take an example so let's take an example of a equal to 11 and b equal to 33 so it means that the time interval of white droplets is 11 and the time interval of black droplets is 33 and we have to calculate which drop is going to fall more in the time interval from 0 to lcm of a comma b so we know that the lcm of any two number a and b is a multiplied by b divided by gcd of a comma b so here we can calculate lcm of 11 comma 33 as 11 multiplied by 33 divided by gcd of 11 and 33 so the gcd of 11 and 33 is also 11 so it is going to be 33 so from time 0 to 33 we want to calculate which drop is going to fall more so the time interval of white droplets is 11 so first white droplet is going to fall at the time 11 and second white droplet is going to fall at the time 22 and the first black droplet is going to fall at the time 33 so at time 33 we can see that there is going to be a white droplet as well but there are going to be two droplets at time 33 one is a white and another one is a black but we already know that if both droplets are coming together its color is going to be the one whose time interval is more so in the end it is going to be a black droplets at time 33 so from time 0 to 33 there are going to be two white droplets and one black droplets so in the end white droplets are more so in the end we have to return the string white now let's take one more example of a equal to 4 and b equal to 3 so the interval of white droplet is 4 and the interval of black droplet is 3 now let's calculate least common multiple of 4 and 3 so the least common multiple of 4 and 3 is going to be 4 multiplied by 3 divided by gcd of 4 comma 3 which is 1 so it is going to be 4 multiplied by 3 divided by 1 so it is going to be a 12 So now I am going to draw a timeline here so we can understand which droplet is going to fall at which moment. So we know that the first white droplet is going to fall at a time unit 4 and after that the next white droplet is going to fall at time 4 plus 4 which is 8. So at time unit 8 next white droplet is going to fall and after that 8 plus 4 which is going to be 12. So the next white droplet is going to fall at time unit 12. and as far as black droplets are considered the first black droplet is going to fall at time unit 3 and as 3 plus 3 6 the next black droplet is going to fall at the time unit 6 and after that 6 plus 3 which is 9 so the next black droplet is going to fall at a time unit 9 and after that next black droplet is going to fall at a time 12 from the diagram here we can see that at time unit 12 one white droplet and one black droplet is going to fall so in that case the droplet with more interval is going to get the color so at time unit 12 in the end it is going to be a white droplet so now we can see that from time 0 till 12 there are going to be three white droplets and three black droplets and both the white droplets and black droplets are equal in that case we have to return the string equal here so from these two examples we can actually derive a formula of how many white droplets or how many black droplets are going to be there and we can see that lcm of a comma b is the first number when both the droplets are going to come at the same time now let l be the lcm of a comma b so l is going to be a times b divided by gcd of a comma b now let small a be the number of white droplets so number of white droplets is going to be is equals to l divided by a minus 1 why we are subtracting this one here because the last droplet which is going to come out at the moment l can be white or black we don't know that for sure so that's why we are subtracting one here and now symmetrically the formula for the number of black droplets is also going to be is equals to b is equals to l divided by b minus 1 
so we are subtracting one because we don't know the color of the last droplet and in the case when a is greater than b in that case the interval of white droplet is more in that case we have to add one to small a because the color of the last droplet that is coming out at the moment l is going to be white and in the case when b is greater than a the interval of black droplets is more than the white droplets in that case we have to add one here and now depending on the value of variable small a small b we have to return either white black or equal now let's look at the code to understand how it is being done now in the solution code here we are getting the variable a and b which is the interval of white droplet and black droplet respectively and after that in this statement here we are computing the lcm so lcm as we discuss is a multiplied by b divided by their gcd and after that here we are computing the number of white droplets and here we are computing the number of black droplets so as we discuss the number of white droplets is going to be l divided by a minus 1 and symmetrically the number of black droplet is also going to be is equals to l divided by b minus 1 and after that in this if else segment what we are doing is that depending on the value of a and b we are deciding what is going to be the color of the droplet that is coming out at the moment l so if a is greater it means it is going to be a white droplet and if uh, b is greater in that case it is going to be a black droplet so we are incrementing b here and in the end depending on the number of white droplets and black droplets we are returning our answer so if number of white droplets is more than we are returning white if the number of black droplets is more than we are returning black and if the number of black and white droplets is equal in that case we are returning equal so that was the solution code for this problem now let's understand the time complexity and space complexity of our solution so the time complexity of our solution is going to be o of logarithm of minimum of a comma b so this time complexity comes from the fact that here in this statement we are computing gcd of two numbers a and b and the time complexity of computing gcd of two number a and b is logarithm of minimum of a comma b and the space complexity of our solution is going to be o of 1 because we are not using any extra space and we have just created few variables such as small l small a and small b now let's move forward to the second problem of today so the second problem of today is 5000 septems now let's begin with reading the problem statement so your friend was playing his favorite game skyrim and came up with a problem for you he gave you an integer array a containing the ids of all items found throughout skyrims there is only one item for every id he has also given you an integer array b containing the cost of each item example for any valid i ai will have a cost equal to bi he gave you 5000 septems the currency of skyrim further he defines type of each item type of any item is the sum of all of its digit modulo 10 and there can be at most 10 different types of item it is guaranteed that the number of items of any particular type does not exceed 5 so there are 10 types of items and the number of items of any single type does not exceed 5 it is also guaranteed that the ids do not repeat themselves and they are unique in nature your friend loves all type of items so he want you to tell the minimum amount of septems you can be left with if you choose exactly two items of each type note that the minimum amount you can spend cannot go below 0 also note that two items of one or more types do not exist then the answer will be minus 1 also written minus 1 if there is no possible answer and constraint on this problem is the size of array a which is the unique ids of every item and a size of array b which is the cost of every item is from 1 to 50 and size of a is always equal to size of b and ai which is the id of individual item is from 1 to 10 to the power 9 and bi which is the cost of individual item is from 0 to 10 to the power 3 which is 1000 So now let's take an example to understand this problem. So now let's take example of n equal to 25 and uh, there are 25 IDs and there are also 25 corresponding costs. So there are going to be 25 elements in both the arrays and this space is not enough to contain 25 elements. So I have written few elements here and few elements below it. And this dotted blue line is the connecting line so it is denoting which cost belong to which element. So this is how we have to read our input. So the first ID is 664 and its cost is 15. And the ID of the second element is 91 and its cost is 1000. And here we can read that the ID is 5 and its corresponding cost is 450. So this format of input is not readable and it is quite big. So now let's compress this input. So we already know that uh, each ID has a type and there can be at max 10 types from 0 till 9. So now we are going to write type of every ID. 
So now we already know that a type of ID is nothing but the sum of all the digits modulo 10. So the type of the first ID is going to be 6 plus 6 plus 4 modulo 10 which is 6 plus 6 12 plus 4 16 modulo 10 which is 6 and the type of the second ID is 9 plus 1 modulo 10 which is 0 and for the next ID type is going to be 3 plus 0 modulo 10 which is going to be 3 and for the next ID it is going to be 7 modulo 10 which is 7 and for the next ID its type is going to be 2 modulo 10 which is nothing but a 2 then for next ID it is going to be 8 plus 8 plus 1 modulo 10 which is 17 modulo 10 so it is going to be 7 similarly we have to calculate type of every ID so these are going to be the respective types of every ID. So now these IDs does not have much significance because in the end we have to buy two items of every type and what was the ID that doesn't matter. So what we can do now is that for every type we can write corresponding costs that belong to that type. So now these are going to be the corresponding cost for every type. So it means that there are four IDs with type 0 and there are three IDs with type 1 and there are three IDs with type 2. And we have to select two elements from every type so from these four element we have to select two and from these three we have to select two and from these three we have to select two and let's say from these two we have to select two and we have to perform our selection in such a way that after selecting exactly two items from all the types we have minimum numbers of septem left it means we have to spend as much septems as possible and we have to also make sure that we are not spending more than 5000 at first it seems like greedy solution will work here and at each iteration what we can do is that for every type we will select the two maximum elements from that type but that solution won't work here let's say we uh, start picking maximum then we pick this element we pick this element we pick this element and we pick this element and we pick this element but now we can see that we have already spent 5000 septems and we have nothing left so we cannot buy other elements but in our question it is stated that we have to buy exactly two items for every type so the greedy solution will won't work here so now we can see that we have to take two elements of every array and we can see that in this lower part there are only two element in every array. So it means that we have to take all of these elements. So if we calculate their sum it is going to be equal to 1000 plus 1000 plus 450 plus 400 plus 15 plus 15 plus 11 plus 13 plus 78 plus 44 plus 1 and plus 1 so their sum is going to be equal to 3028 so we have already spent 3028 septems and we have 5000 minus 3028 septems left and in those septems we have to buy two elements from each of these arrays so we can see that we have already spent more than 3000 septems so in now we cannot take two elements greater than 1000 now let's talk about the elements of type 1 so here we can see that there are three elements with cost 1000 1000 and 30 so we already know that taking two elements with cost 1000 it is not possible so what we can do is that we can take a one element of cost 30 and another element of cost 1000 so our total septum spent uh, till now is going to be is equals to we have to add 1000 here and a 30 here and their sum is going to be is equals to 4058 and now we can see that we cannot buy any other element of cost greater than 950 so we can for all the other types we can eliminate the option and we can select that from this 0 we have to buy this 2 and this 1 and from this type 2 we have to buy this 200 and this 10 and from this type 3 we have to buy this 50 and this 100 so our overall cost is going to be equal to 4058 plus 1 plus 2 plus 200 plus 10 plus 50 plus 100 and their sum is going to be equal to 4421 so this is the maximum number of septems we can spend when we are buying two items of every type and in this case in the end we are going to be left with 5000 minus 4421 septems which is nothing but 579 septems so this is the minimum numbers of septem we can be left with when we are buying two items of every type so now we know that we have to buy two elements of every type and we have to buy them in such a way that we are not exceeding the 5000 septem barrier so what we can do is that we can transform this array into a bigger array where each element of this array is representing the sum of two elements of this array so now here we can see that this 1001 is the sum of this 1000 and this 1 and this 3 is the sum of this 1 and this 2 and we can see that this 210 is the sum of this 200 and this 10 so here we can see that if we pick any two elements from this array then their sum is going to be present in this array on the right side so if we pick 999 and 50 from this side then their sum 1049 is there on the right side now if we rewrite our problem statement now then it is going to be is equals to that we have to pick one element from all the arrays on the right side such that their sum is as much as possible but it is still less than 5000. 
and solving this problem is very easy and we can solve this problem using dynamic programming approach now in order to solve this problem we are going to create a two dimensional dynamic programming dp of ij where i can take values from 0 till 9 which is every type of element and j is the number of septems so it can take values from 0 till 5000 so this is a boolean dynamic programming and dp of ij is going to be 1 when it is possible to buy two items of each type less than or equal to i such that we are left with j septems after buying them and this is the formula for calculating dp of ij in the terms of dp of i minus 1 so dp of ij is nothing but dp of ij or with dp of i minus 1 and mon so here what we are doing is that this mon is the amount of money we were left with after buying i minus 1 items and we are spending cost of pair so this is the cost of individual pair so this is the amount of money we are spending on buying a pair of elements of type i and after that we are left with amount j so if this is possible then this is also possible so that's why we are using our operation here and base case of this dynamic programming is going to be buying nothing and being left with 5000 septems and now let's go through the solution code to understand how this dp is implemented so in our solution code you can see that we are getting a vector a and vector b so a is the vector of ids and b is the vector of cost and in this statement we are reading the size of a and in this statement here we are storing the value 5000 in money and 10 in number of types because we are initially given 5000 septems and we have to buy two items of each type that's why we are storing the value 5000 and 10 here and then we have created a vectors of vector so this vector of vector is going to store the vector of all the cost belonging to that specific type and after that we have created a counter variable and initialize it to zero and this statement and in this for loop here we are iterating over all the ids then we are calculating their type in this for loop here and after calculating their type we are appending the cost of that element to that corresponding type vector so this is the type of the element and this is the cost of that element we are pushing this cost to that type of the vector and at the end of this for loop we are incrementing this counter and moving forward with the next element so in the second part of our solution code we can see that we have created a vector of vectors dynamic programming dp and the dimension of this dp is number of type and money plus 50 so we already know that number of type is initialized to 10 and this money was initialized to 5000 and in this statement here we are reading the size of cost of type 0 and in this two for loop here we are iterating over every pair of elements such that their type was equal to 0 and what we are doing here is that we are calculating how much money we are going to be left with if we bought two items from this set with this cost so that left money is going to be is equals to money minus cost of type 0i plus cost of type 0j and if that value is greater than 0 then we are making dp of 0 well equal to 1. Here as we discussed in our solution approach we are iterating over all the types we are already done with type 0 so we are iterating from 1 till num of types and here we are calculating the size of that type and using these two for loop we are iterating over pairs of element. And here we are iterating over money from 0 till 5000 so, so this mon is the amount of money we were left with after buying two items of each type from 0 till i minus 1 and now we have to buy items of type i so here we are calculating if we had initially mon amount of money and we bought these two elements then how much money we are going to be left with and if dp of i minus 1 mon was possible and well which is the amount of money we are left with after buying these two elements is positive then we are making dp of i well is equals to 1 so here we have initialized our answer to minus 1 and here we are in this for loop iterating from 0 till 5000 and storing the smallest i in our answer such that dp of nums of type minus 1 and i was a 1. So nums of types minus 1 so this value is going to be 9 so dp of 9 comma i is 1. So we are storing such smallest i and in the end we are returning it. If there does not exist such i then this value of answer is going to be minus 1 and we are going to return minus 1. So now let's calculate time complexity and space complexity of our solution. So the time complexity of our solution is going to be O of n log 10 to the power 9. So this term in the time complexity comes from the fact that we are iterating over all the ids and we are calculating their type. And while calculating their type we are dividing them continuously by 10 as long as they are not equal to 0. So the time complexity of that part of the code is going to be o of n log 10 to the power 9 
and when we are evaluating our dynamic programming the time complexity is going to be 10 into number of pairs into 5000 so this 10 here comes from the number of type this 5000 comes from the maximum amount of money we can be left with and this number of pair is the total number of pair of any individual type and we already know there can be at max 5 element of one type so this number of pair can be at max 5 cross 4 divided by 2 which is 10 and the space complexity of our solution is going to be O of n plus 5000 cross 10. So this is the space taken by cost of type uh, vectors of vector and this is the space taken by our DP array. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and share with your friends.